Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we would look at an example that deals with notes payable. We are still working within the capital acquisition and the repayment cycle and here are all the lectures that deals with this topic. So we're going to be focusing on notes payable. So here's a schedule of notes payable that's provided to us by the client. And we're going to have to answer some few questions in order to understand what type of evidence do we need, where do we obtain the evidence and how do we audit notes payable. So let's take a look at the schedule first and let's make sure we understand what's given to us. Here is the notes payable description. They have a mortgage payable, they have an unsecured note, they have a secured bond and they have a convertible debt. So they have four different securities and here's the interest rate that they're being charged for each type of debt. Here are the due dates. This is the beginning balance for each loan and there's no beginning balance because it was issued in during 2016 the convertible bond the convertible debenture this is the addition so they borrowed more money and obviously the 10 million bond debenture was issued during the year here are the payments and obviously those are the ending balances and notice they footed each column they footed each column separately okay so here are a series of questions they want us to understand they want us to see if we understand uh, where do we look for evidence and how do we audit such an account okay for one thing what type of evidence would you examine to support the beginning balance in the account so basically what they're saying here is the beginning balance starting with the beginning balance where do you look for well obviously if you're looking at the beginning balance the beginning balance were the prior year ending balance so if the prior year was audited then that's good then the prior year is your is is your uh, is your source okay now obviously you want to add you want to foot the column to make sure it's footed correctly okay what type of evidence would you use to support the addition of each amount so addition is this column here so you added one million two hundred and fifty thousand in a secured bond so you borrowed more money and you borrowed ten million dollars in convertible debenture Again, where do you look for this information to see that they are ex that, that you did this borrowing? Well, you would start with the board of directors. You, the board of directors, most probably, not most probably, they would have approved those type of borrowing because it's it's those are considered large transaction. Then, if they did approve them, you want to look at the cash receipt journal. So they approved it. Show me the cash. Show me that cash was debited one million two hundred and fifty, and bonds were was credited. Show me that cash was debited ten million, and bonds was credited. I would look at the bank statement. Not only their books, their bank statement. Obviously, the the money made it to the bank. Now, bear in mind, if they borrowed this money to buy an asset, okay, let, they're not gonna get the cash. Then we're gonna see the asset. Then we'd look at the asset on the other hand. But those are the source of information that we will have to look for to verify the addition. What type of evidence would you examine to support the payment? Now we are looking at the payment column here. What type of evidence would you support? Well, we're going to look at the contract. What does the contract state? How much are we paying per year? We're going to look at the amortization schedule. And hopefully we all know what an amortization schedule is. Basically, it shows you a schedule of the payments. We're going to look at the bank statement. What does the bank statement shows us? The bank statement shows us how what, what are the payments that we made. Okay, we're going to look at the cash disbursement journal. All of those will show us that payments were made that support that information. Also, we could look at, um, yeah, those are pretty much the, uh, the main source of information. What procedure would you perform related to the ending balance? Now you're looking at the ending balance right here for all four loans. What information would you look for well for the first thing is you, you want to make sure that those are mathematically computed basically the beginning balance plus the addition gives you the ending balance or minus the payment will give you the ending balance so that's the first thing you want to look at so you want to foot and cross foot so you want to you want to make sure it's the the summation is done properly also what a, what type of evidence could you have here well you could for the ending balance you could get a bank confirmation confirmation of say bank because it may not be from the bank it could be from bond trustee so you're looking for confirmation confirmation from a third party if this is a bank the the, the bank will tell you yes you do owe the, your client owes us this much so that's good okay so that's important also what I want to do is basically I add them all up and after I add them I make sure this is this ties to the general ledger 
and this is the general ledger size to the balance sheet. So I want to make sure I add them and they are added correctly. Now, let's see. What evidence would you use to verify the interest rate and due date? So here they're asking us, what evidence would you use for the interest rate and the due date? Well, obviously the contract. Whatever the bond or loan agreement is, show me the contract. Because in the contract, they're going to tell you how much they're charging you. Now, this is 6.25, 6%, 5.75, 5.25. Now, remember, in the contract, that interest rate could be variable. So you have to be very careful and read those contracts and the, uh, and the bond, it's called a bond agreement or bond venture very carefully. Also, the due date are listed in the contract. So this is where you'd look for this information. So the contract basically gives you a lot of information. Last thing, how would you use how would how might you use this information presented above to audit interest expense and interest payable? Well, remember we did we, here we're going to go to my favorite topic which is analytical procedures. So basically what you would say is you would for each loan you would estimate how much interest expense should be for the loan, okay? For how long was it outstanding? For example, this loan the beginning balance was 1,125,000. We don't know when they made the payment. Let's assume they made the payment just for the sake of simplicity. Let's assume they made the payment the last day of the year. So the 200,000 was the last day of the year. So the, the balance was outstanding 1,125,000 outstanding for the whole year times 6.25%. Let me just compute this make uh, compute this number 1,125,000 multiplied by this should be the interest on this loan if my math is right is $70,312 for this loan so for the interest expense should be $70,312 and I will do the same thing for this loan um, for example the beginning is 750 depending on when we made the payment again I, I assume we made the payment the last day of the year this way the loan is outstanding for the whole year but that doesn't doesn't have to be the case so what i do i will do the interest i'll compute the interest expense for each for each security then i will add it up then i will compare my interest expense to what's listed and if it's reasonable that's good it's if it's you know within a few hundred then that's that's their interest expense is reasonable same thing for interest payable for example i would take a look at this bond just to give you an example how interest payable work <coughs> sorry let's assume for for the sake of illustration this bond this this bond specifically uh we're gonna have to make quarterly payments so we're gonna make the quarterly payment when we're gonna make the quarterly payment uh, january 1st um if it's it's gonna be april 1st it's gonna be october 1st so the first uh, we skipped one quarter which is which is <clears throat> july 1st july 1st and october 1st so the last time we made the payment was october 1st this last time we made the payment so from october 1st till the end of the year we have three months worth of accrued interest so what we do is we'll take 10 million multiplied by 5.25 multiplied by 312 and if we take, you know, 5.25%, if we perform this calculation, we need to accrue interest. We need to accrue interest of take 10 million times 5.25 times 3 fourth, because from October till the end of the year, approximately 131,250. Therefore, interest payable should be that much for this. Interest payable should be that much for this convertible bond. And we'll do the same thing for the other, for these bonds. Then we'll add them up and we know what should be our interest our interest payable and this is again what we did is use analytical procedures then we can compare these figures to what the to what the client has and hopefully they are pretty much the same so this is basically a good example on how to audit notes payable where to get the information from and how to perform analytical procedures if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class as always if you're studying for your cpa exam Study hard. It's worth it.